Hi, um, this is my second try at doing this IG Live. Um, I'm doing this pop-up IG Live to share some of my thoughts surrounding hustle culture and why we need to stop normalizing it and honestly stop seeing productivity as a virtue or a moral good. So hopefully um, that audio has been recorded because I was about halfway through the first time and apparently the audio wasn't coming through. Maybe it was the um, filter. But anyways, um, this is an expansion of an Instagram post that I shared earlier today about how proud I was, am, <laughs> of me and Harpender for co-creating the Women of Color Summit together. And I shared something about how I don't believe in putting anyone on a pedestal and how I don't believe in power over someone. And so, you know, to kind of provide context into that statement, um, I'm not here in the yoga and wellness space to put myself or anyone else on a pedestal. And I'm not here to use my reputation or my standing, um, and that I think I may have or that others think that I have in order to influence someone, use it to spite someone, or just honestly make myself bigger. Amazing. Great. <laughs> I think it was the filter, but um, yeah, like I quit my office job in order to get away from that bullshit, not to replicate it. And I wasn't even working at a big company, but it's everywhere, right? Like this hustle culture, productivity mentality. And this IG Live right now is really just to share some of my thoughts about why it matters to me that we change our relationship to work because I was someone who bought into hustle culture, which is very disempowering. And I was unhappy physically, emotionally, spiritually, and I was really unwilling to admit it and honestly like detach from the awards, the rewards the society gives you for adhering to that. Um, and it's also this bind as well where I was really scared of rest and failure and um, I saw them as bad things, right? Because it's like, I want to be stronger than rest. And I don't want to admit that I can't take this um, shitty work Karen at work, right? So there was all of these things that I was working with. And it's just this Protestant work ethic where we're only worthy when we make profit for our bosses. And like, for me, I bought into it. I bought into it, hook, line, and sinker. And I'm sure that a lot of you can also relate to that. Um, and I suffer with low self-esteem and I felt like an imposter at work and I overworked in order to compensate for that. I would like buy finance books and marketing books on my spare time, on my leisure time with my own money that I made <laughs> to, to like learn more about my clients. And uh, I was making inroads in the job that I was in that I was able to secure another job that I thought was then my dream job but my health issues were still there. I was depressed, I was not happy, I had no energy. It was normal for me to want to spend the whole day in bed on the weekends. Like at any any events that I had, I, I, was, I would be excited in making them, but then I would just not want to go. Like I, I just didn't have that happiness. Like, I guess there was just this desire that I didn't want to be seen. I didn't want to have to put on another mask. And I also had really bad um, health issues, like just physical health issues. Like my gut health was so bad. Um, I ate like shit. I ate like a piece of shit. <laughs> um, I had sugar water. So like, that's what I refer to um, Tim Horton's double double for the Canadians in the room. Um, I drank that. I had like five cups of that every day. I wouldn't have any water, um, just caffeine and sugar. And um, my gut health was so bad that I, I've stopped drinking alcohol. I can't even, I can't have more than one glass now, even now, because um, my, my farts were just so heinous <laughs> that like, it was just like, okay, like, am I going to risk it? Am I going to gamble going out with my coworkers? And like, someone's going to be like, who farted? And I'll be like, 
it's just yeah but it was because my my health was so bad um from being overworked and being stressed out all the time with this like constantly checking my phone and constantly feeling like everything was like life or death and so i was doing that um life buying into that culture and um when I got my next dream job, I thought, okay, maybe now things will change. You know, maybe I'll get that spark again where I, I feel driven, I feel motivated, I feel like I'm actually making a difference. But um, my problems were still there. My health issues were still there. I was still depressed. The only time I felt alive, rejuvenated, energized was when I was doing yoga, talking about yoga, um, and you know, being part of that community. And for me, when I think about hustle culture, um, I've always just had a big problem with that phrase, it's just business, it's not personal. Um, it's all connected and it's just an excuse to act like an asshole and get away with it. Um, it also just goes to show how much we prize um, making money and making profits in this society, but it's all connected. And especially now in the pandemic where like, you're living in your workplace and you're working at home. For those of us who are still lucky to be able to work from home, like business better be personal. Like it better reflect our values. Um, and like for me, what really, what really changed things for me with my continuing to adhere to the hustle culture script and continue to adhere to like the benefits of it, um, I, I couldn't deal with it anymore because I realized the only reason why we're doing this is because that's just the way it is and um i just i just didn't want to be dehumanized anymore you know because hustle culture is dehumanizing um i couldn't deal with the micromanagement the passive aggressive bullying the egotistic cow towing um if that's how you say it um i couldn't deal with it anymore because if I'm only dealing with it because that's just the way that things have always been. Well, that's just not good enough for me, you know? Um, and for me, I quit my job pursuing Irene Yoga Flow as well as Women of Color Summit full time because I wanted to create something of creative potential for other women of color who are feeling lost and unheard of. And for me right now, this is the path of freedom that's really working for me because, and I'm not taking what I am, what I learned and what I was conditioned to do in hustle culture and the work that I'm doing right now. And I think that that's really important for anyone who is trying to create real community and real healing is like being really aware of like, are you still taking the structures and processes um, that you learned in white supremacy in hustle culture and are you just replicating it in wellness and healing um because that's something that I ask myself all the time um and it's something that I never want to do and that I'm always just like really careful of um because it's harmed me so much um it's depleted my energy it's made me um feel disconnected from my body and for who from who I really am because hustle culture would have us believe that we're machines and machines aren't sentient, right? They don't have thoughts um, or value beyond what they produce. And that's not true because we are humans. We're not machines. And we don't have to be dicks to make a living. And we should be asking ourselves, like, where, where did this idea come from? Like, where did this idea of work and suffering and feeling like we have no power to change things in our lives come from? And so just some, just some thoughts for you all. Um, I do just wanna like kind of close things off by reading a quote from the great cosmic mother, which is literally like my Bible right now, or just like a sacred text. Um, very powerful stuff about matriarchy, um, the Neolithic cultures that existed predating the patriarchy. And I'm sharing this quote because I think it's really relevant to understanding the historical roots of like where we are and like how we're still adhering to hustle culture and why we don't really need to. So um, the great cosmic mother quote reads, 
Under patriarchy, there is a literal belief that all of life is created for men to use. And what patriarchal men see as usable is also seen as contemptible. So it's, it's a, it talks a lot about the patriarchy, but I would also just like input um, white supremacy in there as well. <laughs> That's what I've been doing. And um, later on, they, there's a summary shared of Foucault's analysis of the European Inquisition that's also quite relevant for, you know, how we view work, suffering, and life, and how we have just, like, endured for so long under the system that's, like, really grounding us up. Um, so I'm just reading this quote by the Great Cosmic Mother. The patriarchal machine set in place by Roman conquest and well-oiled by Christian ideology ruled Europe by a threefold subjugation of mind, spirit, and body. Rome could not control Europe forever by armed force. It had to control European mind and spirit to condition the pagan people to exploit and police themselves. So it's kind of seeing parallels right now to like, you know, our adherence to hustle culture. So Christianity was the tool of this conditioning. Generation upon generation of Europeans underwent what amounted to political brainwashing or the first colonial conditioning process. People were told from childhood that they were born evil, born in sin, and that life was meant to be full of suffering. Um, they deserved the suffering as punishment for their human corruption. The elite, the elite few who did not seem to be suffering much but lived in luxury and domination over the wretched many were said to be placed in domination by God and their rule was not to be questioned. So this Christian indoctrination is a training program for voluntary self-repression. It was designed to keep the natives busy, on their knees, weeping buckets of blood, while the elite few carried off all the marbles. So this was just like so mind blowing for me because, um, you know, this is really like the history, um, I think, um, of, of hustle culture. You can see that trickle down effect. And in The Great Cosmic Mother, it talks about how um, in Europe, the European Inquisition happened and that's, that's what happened. And then like the witch burnings stopped because colonialism happened and Europeans started to take this model um, overseas. And so that's really why witches were, st were not really burned at the stakes anymore because they had another oppress another people to oppress, another group to oppress. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to share this quote um, because, um, you know, this isn't the only way to live. This isn't the only way to be. And in changing our relationship to work, it's realizing like you don't have to be busy to be valuable and that your worth is unconditional. And for me, the, I, I think that when we normalize hustle culture, there is this tendency to turn ourselves into machines and to really dehumanize ourselves and one another. And, um, you know, just trying to move away from that, right? And being really um, inter interrogative about like your own self, because I'm, I'm still unlearning this conditioning um, for me. And I'm also having compassion for others who still have that, right? Um, so yeah, thank you so much everyone for tuning in right now to my little bit of a ramble and uh, the Women of Color Summit, The Art of Authentic Living is happening next week, February 23rd to the 28th and we are also going to be talking about um, the workplace um, as it relates to authentic living, um, how we can charge our worth as women of color as well as like how we can align ourselves to our, our work desires. So. Um, lots of great stuff. Thanks so much, um, y'all, for tuning in.